Hi friends, here we are going to uh, see this uh, uh, activity, configure initial Aurora settings. In this activity, we will verify the default Aurora configuration, then configure and verify the initial Aurora configuration, then finally we will save the running configuration file. First of all, we will verify the default Aurora configuration. Establish a console connection to R1. Choose a console cable from the available connections. Then click PCA and select RS232. Then we have to uh, uh, select console from Rotor 1. Uh, then we have to go to desktop terminal uh, from this uh, PCA. Uh, then click OK uh, and press enter. You are now able to configure R1. Right. Coming to the connection. Here is our uh, console cable. From PCA we will connect to RS232. Then to this uh, R1 uh, to console. Now we will access this uh, router uh, with the help of uh, uh, this PCA using terminal. So uh, PCA desktop, here we have to go to terminal, but configuration we will keep everything uh, default, okay. Press return to get started, here we can see now we are in router. Coming to the next step, enter privileged mode and examine the current configuration. You can access all the rotor commands from privileged exit mode. However, because many of the privileged commands configure operating parameters, privileged access should be password protected to prevent unauthorized use. Okay, here we, uh, we will examine the current configuration. So we have to go to uh, privileged exit mode by giving this command enable and there we will give uh, show or running config. Coming to PCA terminal. Here we will give enable and here we are going to give show running config. And here we can see the details. Answer the following questions. Uh, what is the router's uh, host name? Okay, coming to our uh, uh, show running config, here we can see uh, host name is uh, router. So, this is the default uh, router name. Next is uh, how many fast third interfaces does the router have? Okay, we will verify that. Uh, here we can see the interfaces. So, uh, they asked about the fast Ethernet. Here we can see Gigabit Ethernet, it's Gigabit Ethernet. Here we have Serial, Serial and here we can see Fast Ethernet. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So total here we can see 4 Fast Ethernet interface in this router. Coming to the next question. How many Gigabit Ethernet interfaces does the router have? Okay, we already have seen that here. Here we can see that interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. Uh, we can see total uh, 2 uh, gigabit Ethernet interface uh, uh, in this router. Then how many serial interfaces does the router have? Uh, it's 2. Here we can see those interfaces. Uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. Next is, what is the range of values shown for the VTY lines, virtual terminal lines? Okay, here we can see that. It's here. Line VTY 0 to 4. It's given 0 to 4. That means uh, 5 lines. Next is, uh, display the current contents of NVRAM. Show startup config. Startup config is not present. So, this is a message. Uh, uh, going to show when we give this uh, show command we will uh, verify that show startup config here we can see startup config is not present uh, why does the router respond with the startup config is not present message it's obviously we know all the uh, configuration is now in the RAM uh, that is in the volatile memory uh, which is not copied to uh, NVRAM. So that's why it shows this uh, startup config is not present. Okay, next we are going to configure and verify the initial router configuration. To configure parameters on a router, you may be required to move between various configuration modes. Yes, we can do that. Notice how the prompt changes as you navigate through the router. 
configure the initial settings on R1. Uh, if you have difficulty remembering the commands, refer to the contents uh, for this topic. The commands are the same as you configure on a switch. Yes, so already we configured our switch with the uh, initial configuration. Uh, we are going to set the host name as R1. Then uh, we are going to set these passwords. Console as let me in. Then a privileged exec unencrypted password as Cisco. Then encrypted password as it's a secret. Also, we are going to encrypt all plain text passwords. And finally, we are going to set the banner MOTD as unauthorized to access is strictly prohibited. Okay, we will do that one by one. First of all, we will set the host name. Configure terminal host name as R1. Now we will set password for the line console. So we have to go to line console 0 and we will set the password. Here we can see the password. Uh, so let me in. Okay. Also, we will give the command as login. Now we will enable a privileged in unencrypted password using this command enable password. Here we are going to set the password as Cisco. Also we will enable secret. Uh, it's a encrypted password. Enable secret as it's a secret. Now we will encrypt all the plain text passwords uh, using service password encryption. Also, we will set the banner MOTD and here is our delimiter and the message. Uh, it's unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. We will end with the same delimiter what we used. Okay. Now we will verify the initial settings of what we done on this uh, uh, router. Uh, verify the initial settings by viewing the configuration for R1. Uh, what command do you use? We can use a show running config. Yes. So exit the current console session until uh, you see the following message. Before that, uh, we will uh, verify our initial uh, settings uh, on this router R1. Show. We will exit and we will go to uh, privileged exit mode. Here we will give show running config and we will verify it. Here we can see the host name R1. Uh, we can see enable secret and enable password. So this uh, plain text password is encrypted. Okay. Also here we can see our console password is set. Also we enable the login. It's encrypted. Now we have to we exit and we have to get this message. Press return to get started. Uh, then press enter you should see the following message unauthorized access is strictly prohibited this is the banner MOTD uh, what we set and then it will uh, prompt for the uh, uh, password user access verification All right we will see that coming to our router R1 here we are going to exit yes press return to get started so we will press enter and here we can see the banner MOTD what we set Unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. Okay. Now user access verification. We have to give here the password what we set for the line console zero. It's uh, let me in. It's working. Next is uh, why should every ruler have a message of that day MOTD banner? Uh, usually uh, network administrators uh, set this uh, MOTD for uh, the intermediary devices. Uh, this is just a warning for the intruders. If you are not prompted for a password, what console line command did you forget to configure? Anyway, here it's prompted. If it is a not prompted password, obviously uh, you forgot to configure the login command. We configured that. Uh, here we can see that. It's here we set the line console password, then we given the command to login. Next is enter the passwords necessary to return to privileged exit mode. Okay, we are here we are going to give the command enable, and here we can see it's prompted for the password. Here for this uh, privileged exit password, uh, I mean privileged exit mode, we given uh, two password. Uh, first one was uh, uh, 
uh, Cisco and second one was it's a secret so first we will try Cisco no it's not accepted now we will try the second one that is an encrypted password uh, that is uh, uh, it's a secret yes it's accepted here they ask why would the enable secret password allow access to the privileged exit mode and the enable password no longer be valid yes here one thing we have to keep in mind the enable secret password overrides the enable password if both are configured on the router uh, we must enter the enable secret password to enter privileged exit mode so here uh, we given uh, this uh, first password uh, this enable password cisco uh, it not accepted uh, then we given the uh, enable secret password uh, that is uh, uh, it's a secret then uh, we come to this uh, privileged exit mode next is if you configure any more passwords on the router are they displayed in the configuration file as a plain text or in encrypted form explain so obviously once you give this uh, service password encryption uh, all the passwords whatever we set and uh, the password we are going to set in the future also will be encrypted next is save the running configuration file uh, which is important uh, save the configuration file to nvram uh, you have configured the initial settings for r1 now back up the running configuration file to nvram that is non volatile ram to ensure that the changes made are not lost if the system is rebooted or loses power so what command did you enter to save the configuration to nvram uh, we can use that uh, command here we can see that i will give it here uh, copy we have to copy from running config and we are going to uh, copy to startup config that is from ram to nvram uh, destination file name startup config yeah it's okay so we will give the default file name building configuration okay it's copied next is what is the shortest unambiguous version of this command all right so here we can see that it's uh, c it's enough no c o is it enough no again with the c o we we have three commands so we have to give c o p it's okay we will try with the r we'll put question mark uh, here we can see uh, with the r we have only one command so obviously we can give r space next is startup config starting with the yes yes okay here we can see it's yes t right so we can give only yes we'll try with yes now we'll press enter ambiguous command that means again here we have to give a yes t because with the starting with yes here we can see startup config as well as yes ep so better we will give a yes t so it won't be uh, ambiguous now we'll press enter yes correct so it's a C O P space R space S T. Next is a which command displays the contents of the NVRAM. Uh, we can use uh, uh, show startup config. Here we can see the details. Verify that all of the parameters configured are recorded. If not, analyze the output and determine which commands were not done or were entered incorrectly. You can also click check results in the instruction window. Oh, check results. So here we can see. I think almost everything uh, completed. Here we can see that. Also, here we can see our completion status. Uh, it's 80 out of 80 next is the optional bonus save the startup configuration file to flash uh, although you will be learning more about managing the flash storage in your order uh, in later chapters now you may be interested to know uh, now that as an added backup procedure you can save your startup configuration file to flash so by default the router still loads the startup configuration from nvram but if nvram becomes corrupt we can restore the startup configuration by copying it over from flash that's great uh, complete the following steps to save the startup configuration to flash examine the contents of flash using the show flash command right so coming to pca here we can give 
show flash here we can see the files uh, in flash here we can see our iOS file and 2.xml file how many files are currently stored in flash so here uh, we can see total uh, three uh, files which of these files uh, would you guess is the ios image now here we can see the file name uh, with extension dot bin it's an ios file why do you think this file is the ios image nice question uh, so here we identified uh, this file as ios uh, by its uh, extension you can see it's a dot bin uh, and here we can see other files with with the dot xml so here this ios file is uh, uh, with extension dot bin also here we can see the length of this file is a little uh, bigger uh, than uh, other files so but we have to identify using this uh, extension next is save the startup configuration file to flash using the following commands copy startup config flash so destination file name uh, startup config the ruler prompts to store the file in flash using the name in brackets if the answer is yes uh, then press enter if not type an appropriate name and press enter use the show flash command to verify the startup configuration file is now stored in flash okay we will give that command copy startup config to flash so destination file name we will give the default destination file name so here we can see it's copied now we can verify using show flash and uh, here we can see that file even we can copy it with a different name uh, copy startup config to flash here we will give the name as a backup nvram we will try this now we will see show flash and here we can see our file same file with the name startup config here we can see the length it's 1281 1281 that's all we scored the suggested scoring so here uh, in this uh, packet tracer activity we have seen how to configure the initial router settings so dear friends if you have any doubt any suggestions please comment below also consider subscribing and I request uh, to share uh, this channel with your friends thanks for your great support and we will meet again with the next video